Hello and thank you for watching. I'm Jennifer Bowman with Olympia Piano and this video is going to be a tutorial for the Orange Book of Dozen a Day and this will be chapter three, group three, which starts on page 19 of the book. The way this video will work is each exercise will have a tutorial and then a short playthrough at the end of each exercise. Most of the tutorials will be overhead tutorials and certain exercises will have a side view as well. You can find all the links to each exercise in the description. So we'll get started with group three. This is kind of like the very first piece in the book, group one, wake up and stretch. What's different about this one is we've got a trill at the beginning, this TR. It means that you play back and forth between the note here and the note above it. So we're gonna be playing back and forth between C and D. The author recommends using fingers one and two. When you're playing trills, I like to have a big down motion and then the wrist is gonna come a little bit higher. Usually I put the pedal on too. And then you're just kind of jiggling back and forth. I would recommend trying this trill at the beginning, not only with one and two, but with one and three or maybe two and three. See which fingers seem to work the best. For me, one and three is stronger than one and two. But get used to one, two, one, three, and two, three. And so the way this will work, you'll have four counts, so you'll feel one, two, three, four. See how high my wrist is? Two, three, four, and then the piece starts. So we're in the key of C. This is what we call a diatonic scale, a certain order of whole steps and half steps. So this is a diatonic scale in the key of C major. And what we're doing is getting used to all of the different places that you could start in the C scale and how that changes the feeling. Now, of course, C is all flat. So really the only thing that you're changing is your starting point. But if you did this piece in a different key, you'd be able to negotiate where the black keys were with different starting points. We're just getting used to how the diatonic scale sounds when we start on different syllables. Each measure is going to start on a different syllable. So we start on Do here, Re, which is D, Mi, E, Fa, F, So, G, La is A in the key of C, T is B, and then Do is C. I would practice this hands together from the beginning. So you get used to also how the scale sounds. One hand is going up the scale, the other hand is going down the scale. So the final thing I wanna talk about is the cross under. So we're gonna keep the hand straight. So the thumb's gonna crawl under, fold under, finger three, and then dip. So straight, under, then scoop, and float off. You're gonna reset the position on the next note up and you're also gonna reset the dynamics. So let's say we're gonna start each measure, mezzo piano, mezzo forte, grow a little bit and then reset. Here's the side view of number one. I'm gonna do two things in this side view. First is the trill. So I want you to notice the down motion of the first note and I'm gonna show you three different fingerings for the trill. So we'll start with the one, two as notated. So one, two, and then you're just jiggling back and forth. I have the pedal down, it makes the trills a lot easier. Or you have one, three, down, up, wrist comes up. If the wrist is down here, then you're working too hard. So you want the wrist to be up and it's just jiggling. Or two, three. For my hand, one, three is the strongest. So see what works for you. Part two is the motion when you're dipping down after the cross under. So we'll have straight, up crawls under, and then you're gonna do a little bit of a dip, lift, reset, straight, under, then dip. So let's do a full playthrough, and we'll do it about this tempo. Let's see, one, and two, and three. So we've got the trill, down, two, two, and three, and four, and keep your wrist high. I like to have the pedal. Three, and get ready. Scoop. See? When you do the wrist scoop, it makes those crescendi.
just briefly, I'm going to show you what I mean if we do the key of D, for example, with the black keys. I'm going to do maybe two or three measures, just starting not from the trill, but right after. So if we have the key of D, we're negotiating where our black keys are. transpose use the same fingering one two three one even if your thumb is coming in on black keys the goal of this is to get the feel of the key exercise two is deep breathing we've had lots of deep breathing exercises I like to use this one as rolling up through the chords and we can see here at the beginning it's in the key of G so F sharp means this is the scale we're using and this is an exercise of the primary chord inversions in the key of G. Just to review, our primary chords are the one chord, so G major, the four chord, and the five chord. So we're going to go through this exercise and review those chords in their inversions. So our one chord inversions are one, three, five. First inversion, one, two, five. Second inversion, one, three, five. So using that fingering for the right hand, one, three, one, two, one, three. Left hand is going to be five, three, one, five, three, one, five, two, one. The other things she incorporates in this exercise is the pedal. So we're going to change the pedal every time we have this little upside down V. When you're changing it, your hand goes down first, your foot comes up, and then back down. And then the other thing I'd like you to think about is as you play through this piece, if one is our home base, four, a little bit further from home, five, we're going to grow in volume to the five chord, and then we could either keep growing, because it goes back to the one chord, G, in the last couple measures, or we could have the five chord be the loudest. So before the playthrough, I also want to mention one other thing. Because we have the pedal down, it allows us plenty of time to move from position to position. So I'd like you to think, as you're playing this, play, move, play, move, play, move. So you're resetting in the new position during this space in between the chords because the pedal is holding the notes down. So we don't wanna go like this, one, two, one, two, and then take a bunch of time, but rather do it rhythmically, play, move. So forth. So I would probably go through this first hand separately just to lock in the fingering and then do it hands together because when you have hands together, root position has the same fingering. First inversion, left hand has 5 3, right hand has 1 2. And then second inversion, left hand has 5 2, right hand has 3 5. So keeping track of where the finger 2 is, if that makes sense. So let's do a slow playthrough of deep breathing. Pedal goes down, low G here. Play, move, play, move, play, move, play, move. And C is your four chord. Play, move, play, move, play. D is your five chord, a little louder. crescendo all the way to the end. It's going higher. One, two, three, four. Hold a little extra for that fermata. Exercise three, jumping feet apart and flinging arms out. We've got three things here. We've got the distance of the octave. We've got staccati. So touch octaves instead of like this, we're just going to be a touch, 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 touch. And then finally, we've got these octaves creating some harmonies. We're not doing the same octaves, but we're doing a third and then diminished fifth, which gives us the harmony of a five, seven chord. We have the third and the seventh here, which leads back to here. So she's giving you the shells of a one and five, seven harmony.
so for line one, we're going to do the one chord a little softer, the five, seven, a little louder, one, five, seven, and then line two, do a crescendo. We're alternating one, five, seven, one, five, seven, one, one, one. So always get in the habit of adding dynamics and creativity to your finger exercises, because then that will be built in when you transfer these skills to repertoire. This one, again, I would start this right off just hands together because what you're going to do is keep your eyes on your thumb and we're going to bounce and feel the octave, but have your eyes here where the thumbs are. If you can't reach a full octave, then just know you're doing just a mini little rainbow here with, in terms of the feeling, but we want to anchor with the thumbs. So here we go, we'll start maybe mezzo forte here at the beginning, little mini arcs. Here we go, ready, go. Five, seven, quick touches. You don't have to make it staccato, just touch it quickly. Now we set the dynamics, one, move. And crescendo, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So in exercise four, crossing leg over, lying down, there is a lot going on in this exercise. So I'm gonna go through each hand and things to consider and then we'll do it hands together. So we start at the beginning with the right hand. The right hand's gonna consider big, large roll-ups on the pad of the finger. So it's gonna feel like this. We'll put the pedal down. One, two, roll up and two, two, roll up. One, two, one, two, one, two, three, four. So that's pretty straightforward. But now line two for the right hand, take special note of the fingering. Five and two. I'll show you why. So the angle of the hand, we don't wanna do one because the thumb, that would force the hand to have to be in too far. But if we do five and two, you see that? So we're gonna kind of straighten like that. So five, touch, look at the angle of the hand and straighten down to D, B, G, A, D. This is a lot more efficient than going like this. See how far your hand has to move? This way, you can have your arm like this. Now, left hand is going to be a little bit different because left hand's playing full chords, but left hand's also not going quite as high. So we'll have five, one chord, roll up on each, and five, five, seven. Notice the angle of my hand. Five chord, angle here. And then two for this high G. Then line two for the left hand, straight on, two, three, four, reset, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. On these whole notes, I'm building in a slow, gentle roll, and that's just to always encourage flow in the music. So here we go with the playthrough for number four. Exercise five, chinning yourself, one of the most difficult exercises in the book. So this one, please just do your best. First thing I want to point out is now she's in the key of D, D major. So we've got two sharps. And all we're doing is we're sitting here in D position and trying our best to hold these two keys down and play the other ones. So definitely do this one hand separately. This will be played on the pad portion of the fingers, not too much on the tips, pad. So I like to stand up into that position 
and then we're gonna just roll up on each note. So let's get set, let's try the right hand first. Four and two, on an acoustic, you might be able to set it silently. Digital, probably not, doesn't really matter. You just have to hold that four and two down. Four is gonna wanna come up. I'm just telling you that right now. The motion is we're gonna roll through, roll, and then my next finger is gonna get set, and I'm gonna release this one. Next finger is gonna get set, and then do it again, do it again, and reset. And my pinky's going crazy because it doesn't want to rest. You really have to just focus on keeping that finger four down. Now let's try that with the left hand. This is really focus in concentration. Two and four goes down. And then we're gonna roll through five, get three ready. Roll up and roll up and roll up. When you roll, you release the finger that just played. But you have to always think of four and two staying down and so forth. Here, here's number five side view. So we're gonna get set. We find our fours and twos. I just want you to see how I'm navigating the roll up and switch. So we roll, get rid of the bottom, then reset on the middle, reset on the top. All of this time, I am thinking two and four, please stay down, and so forth. So, so hands together is extremely difficult because you're trying to keep the two and four down and your finger numbers are different because do on one hand is five, on the other hand it's one. Okay, hands together. Now for this video, I just want you to know this is my sixth time trying to get it right. This is hard stuff, so do your best. So you're gonna put two and four down. We're gonna roll through and think about which one we're lifting to get to the next one. So first we're gonna play the bottom. Now lift the bottom, play the middle. Lift the middle, play the top. Lift the top, play the middle. Lift the middle, play the bottom. Lift the bottom, play the middle. Lift the middle, play the top. And middle and bottom. Middle, top, middle, bottom, middle, top. So take your time with this exercise to get it right. It really helps your finger independence, number five. All right, here's exercise six. We have a lot of tricky ones in this chapter. Repeated notes, some of the most tricky things you can do in piano playing. So I'm gonna show you two techniques which I hope can help you play these repeated notes. And we're gonna do hands separately, then hands together. So the first thing I want you to notice is that each group has an accent on the first one and then two staccati. So I want you to feel like on this first one, you are dropping, drop, touch, touch, drop, touch, touch, and so forth. And when we get to the 16th notes, it's drop, touch, touch, touch. There's gonna be two techniques I'm gonna show you. One is three and two basically playing on the same part of the key right around here. One's here, the wrist is high, and you're drop, touch, touch, drop, touch, touch. Imagine a little circle between all three of those. So whereas on the way up, the three was kind of waiting for its turn, on the way down, three has to yank over to the left. So I like to think it's part of that circle and then it's coming back down. Left hand, same exact thing, just the opposite direction. So. circle is just going the other way. Then when you get to the bottom, again, that third finger is going to catch the impetus of that imaginary circle and reset. Now, the other way of thinking about this is allowing the fingers to each have their own designated spot on the keys. I'm going to demonstrate this with the four, three, two, one. So it's going to feel four and three will basically have the same spot, twos here and ones here. 
this kind of technique will come in handy for maybe you have uh, repeated notes and your other hands underneath doing something where you really have to get high. So the wrist is high, the hands will be more this direction than this direction, so almost 90 degrees. So in this case, we're gonna have a zigzag effect. So we have four, three, two, one, then we zigzag over, zigzag over, and so forth. So then we come back down, you're gonna have to lead a little bit further. So again, that first finger is gonna grab on the way back down. So let's go through both of those. One time, I'll use the more straight technique on the triplets and then the more 90 degree technique on the 16th. So right hand, the horizontal first, and then more 90 degrees on line two with the 16th notes. Keep those imaginary circles in mind, keep the drop in mind on those accents. So drop, touch, touch. over, open out, and then touch, 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 drop, touch, touch, touch. One thing I want you to notice is when we're about to open out, my hand's gonna turn back over. So at the end there, that last couple, that last measure. Four, three, two, one, open. We don't wanna go four, three, two, one, open, out, and play. Tiptoe running. I wanted you to see the side view of the two different ways that I showed you how to do it. So way number one, we're going to have the hand move through the key in a parallel fashion. So three, two, one, three, two, one, three, two, one. So that's more straight, still on the tips with a higher wrist, or you can turn the hand and have it play three different spots on the key. So you want to get used to both of these ways because depending on your piece of repertoire, it might require one or the other technique. So this one would look like this, three, two, one, left hand, we could either move through in a horizontal parallel fashion, or you could play on the keys in a sideways fashion. So either of those work, then you want to practice getting those together at the same time. So now hands together is not as difficult as it seems. Don't try to read the music. Just look at your hands. Know you're going out five positions, and then you're gonna stretch an octave. That's all we're doing, and we're doing opposite directions. So we have drop, touch, touch, drop, touch, touch. Now reaching over, but same motion, little circle. Very difficult exercise, just do your best. Exercise seven is incorporating the distance of an octave on the outside and then adding some harmony on the bottom with finger two in the interval of a third. You'll encounter this sort of figure in repertoire a lot because that third gives the octave a little bit of harmony. What we're gonna do, instead of keeping the hand straight like this, you notice my hand is turned a little bit to the right, creating a U shape here. So you'll notice there's a slur on beat one ending on beat two. And for this, I use what I call a down up technique. So we're gonna have down and then just lift up on the staccato. You're not gonna poke it and make it staccato, just lift up and that will make it sound short. So down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Keep the U shape, resist the temptation to go straight like this. With the U shape, you're playing I would say on three quarters of your finger pad instead of 100%, which is totally okay. And take a look at where the fingers are anchoring. Thumb and pinky at the edge, they're shorter fingers. Finger two's here in the middle. We're not gonna have finger two all the way out here. Follow the natural position of your hand. Okay, so we've talked about the shape of the right hand. So left hand's just gonna be glued to the keys, basically. 
In terms of dynamics, let's grow to measure three of the right hand. We're moving up to here, and then we'll crescendo all the way to the end. So line one will go up and down in the dynamics, line two getting louder. Here we go. In exercise eight, it's somewhat of a variation. Left hand will just be going the opposite way. Right hand will actually have more of a melody in this one, and the left hand's creating some harmony, but it's gonna be the same gestures. Down, up, down, up. Notice the angle of my hand. I'm not straight, I'm at an angle, kind of like this. Then the right hand's just gonna have simple roll-ups. Two, three, four. and then same dynamics as the other one. So we have down, up, down, up, and switch, up, down, up, and switch, up, down, up, a little softer, and faster motion harmonically. Exercise nine, very fun exercise. We've got these little tiny notes here, little tiny notes, those are called grace notes. And we're just gonna go up the scale using the notes of the C scale, so no black keys. And we're gonna go all the way up the scale with these grace notes. So the grace notes come before the main note and the fingering on these is gonna be one, two, three, four. So first let's talk about technique for these grace notes. They're very light notes. This will be played on the tip portion of the hands and we're gonna kind of snap through them like this. It's like you're opening a door. So your fingers are on the notes and you're gonna rip through them and lift up on this. Notice on that C or the main note on beat one, you have both an accent and a staccato. So it's gonna be a quick snap. I'll show a side view of this for sure. So we're gonna roll through, open the door, and it's gonna sound like this. So I don't want you thinking down, 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 down. I, th I want you thinking skim the top of the notes. In terms of the timing, it would come in between the and and the next beat. So one and two and three and four and one and two and move, get ready, and so forth. Notice where my hands are on the keys too. I'm kind of going here with my fingers where they naturally play the keys. Left hand, same thing. Left hand's gonna be at a little bit of a different angle because the note on beat one with the left hand is the thumb, whereas the right hand starts with the thumb. So we're gonna end in here with the right hand, but down here on the left hand. But it's gonna be the same technique, opening the door this way on the fingertips and two, and three, roll through. Here's number nine from the side. I wanted you to see how the hands snap off on beat one. So it's without the grace notes, it's gonna feel like this. It's like a quick pull, like this is a fishing line and it's pulling up here like that. So you pass through and so forth. The left hand, same thing, but it's gonna angle a little bit. So let's try that, hands together. One and two, ready, go. And two and three, hands feel different. And get them ready during the rest. Four and two and three and four, quick. And two, three, four. And two and three and four. And two and two and three and four and and two three four and four chord one chord first inversion two three four i love that exercise so try that in other keys so you get used to the black keys 
All right, exercise number 10. We've had exercises like this before. Take note of the key signature. She's having us work in different keys. We've got to negotiate two sharps now in the key of D major. So there are going to be two things besides the new key signature of the key of D major for running. And those two things are playing on the tips for scales. We want to keep it nice and smooth. So don't let your wrist get too low when you come underneath. Keep it more of straight and let the thumb fold under. And then as you approach beat three, you see how we've got a couple Ds at the top. We're not just going up and down. We have a little turnaround, I guess you could call it. So I want you to give a little bit of an accent on beat three here with finger four. So you'll feel straight under, dip a little bit, then press down push off in a way, straight, push off, and that gives that up and down feeling. Then the left hand will feel a little bit different because of the fingering. So left hand's going to feel straight, push, and left hand will go under, over, on the way. Exercise 10 from the side view, I wanted you to just see how we have that little turnaround at the top. So if we have So let's try hands together. Each measure is going to have a crescendo to beat three. Here we go. One. Exercise 11, cartwheels. Again, we are in the key of D major. And so we're exploring the primary chords in the key of D major. Here's our D major scale. Here's our primary chords, one, four, and five. All just root position primary chords this time. So I'd suggest before playing this as written to play it in blocks just to get the positions down because it's a little interesting how she does it. So put the pedal down, we've got root, 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 here's a D, finger three. Now when we go to the four chord, which is G, the right hand is gonna start. So pinky is gonna go where three is. Switch the pedal, One, right, left, right. Still a D here. And then we've got our five chord, left hand finger three is gonna scoot down one. One, two. Then again, this becomes the top note of the one chord. And reach down even though you can't see it. So let's do that in rhythm. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Switch one, four chord. We're just going to pass through those positions that we just did. One, two, three, switch. Switch and up. Switch and up. One, two, three, four. Exercise 12, fit is a fiddle. Again, dealing with the key of D major. Lots of little things to note in this. We've got the harmony. Left hand has the one chord and the four chord in inversion. The right hand has the one chord and the five seven chord in an inversion. We've got interesting rhythms. 
quarter notes, half notes, eighth notes. So making sure the rhythm is stable. We have the hands taking turn with the melody, switching off every two measures. And then we also have some great articulations to think about. So hands doing two different things at a time. So I'm gonna go through each hand separately and then hands together. Here's the right hand first. We've got touch, touch, smooth, touch, touch, roll up. Super roll, one, two, three, four. And then here's our one chord with just one and five. Touch, touch, smooth, touch, touch, roll up. And one, two, three, four, and one two, three, four. Same thing with the left hand. Roll-ups on the finger pads. One, two, three, four. Four chord and inversion. Touch and then cross over for this melody. Touch, touch, roll up. One. You want to lock in each hand separately because they'll be doing different things. Let's do hands together. All right, here we go. Right, left hand holds, right hand touch. Touch, touch, smooth. Left hand's getting ready to switch and hold. Right hand five's gonna go where two was. Roll up, right hand move up. that one fast just for fun one two ready go thank you very much for watching this tutorial on does it a day orange book group three i have two more to go in this book so please subscribe so you don't miss the final tutorials of the orange book please write to me in the comments so i can know what you're working on and let me know about your progress and as always thank you for watching